Paired sample seed tests are cool. Um, the reason I saved them for the end, sometimes uh, they introduce these before the independent sample seed test, but I wanted to put them in, the, in at the end because the other ones sort of build up in this real logical way of like, oh, you lost that piece of information and you lost this piece of information. Paired samples, it's not about losing information per se. And in fact, as I mentioned before, you know the population mean because you're looking at different scores. What's the difference of people from one step to the next? And so if there's no difference, then the mean would be zero, right? So this is sort of its own weird thing. It says off to the side because it's a within subjects design. But basically all it is is a single, simple, single sample t-test, but you use different scores rather than raw scores. All that a different score is is subtract your pre-test from your post-test. It's the difference between the two tests for you. Does that make sense? But the math is the same, and I'm going to show you here this, show this to you here in just a second. The difference score is calculated by subtracting each subject score in one item, such as a post-test, from that subject score in another item, such as a pre-test, right? That's it backwards, uh, maybe, from what it should be, but it doesn't really matter. It's just that you're looking across things and saying, what's the difference between the two? So we're sort of canceling out all the noise. So if you came in and you got a seven on the test, and then you left and you got a nine on the test, you got a different score of two, right? Someone else comes in and they get a three on the test and they walk out and they got a five on the test. It's also a difference of two. So you, you had an equivalent gain. These are also called gain scores. You had an equivalent gain from the class, even though one of you was better on both tests than the other one was on, on either, right? Does that make sense? So it's a way of sort of eliminating that between subject noise. You may just be better at taking tests than I am, right? Well, if I use this type of design, that washes out because all we're looking at is how you're improving rather than individual differences that characterize us. This is important and the reason I'm mentioning this is because within subjects designs in which you compare people to themselves, methodologically can be problematic, right? If I gave you the exact same test at the end that I gave you at the beginning, you might just remember all the answers, right? So in that sense, it can be problematic. But when you can avoid problems like that, within subjects designs are always much more powerful than between subjects because you can ignore all of the other factors that contribute to differences. Right? So maybe I didn't sleep last night because I had the flu and you did, and so you're going to ace the test and I'm not, right? Between subjects, that looks exactly the same as though you just did better on the test. Between subjects can't differentiate all these sort of extraneous causes of things versus what we want to focus on as the cause. Within subjects allow you to do that because you can ignore the sort of individual differences between people. That three to five person was just worse at taking tests than the seven to nine person but they both are treated the same in a within subjects because they both gain two points. Does this make sense? It's sort of a deep point about methodological design. Within subjects designs, if you can pull them off and justify them, always better. Always better. You can show in a within subjects design with like a quarter of the people what you can show in a between subjects because you just get a cleaner signal coming through. We're going to talk a little bit more about this signal noise stuff here in a little bit. Here's the formula. That D, notice that D bar right there. The D bar is similar to the X bar that you saw in the, um, in the uh, single samples t test, but it's different scores, right? So I take everyone's post-test score, I subtract their pre-test score, I get a whole bunch of D scores for every person, right? So you have, you have score one and you have score two, but then I just subtract them and give you just one score, and that's your score, your gain score, right? Now again, if I'm comparing that sample to a population, right? So and then I take the mean, I get everyone's mean. Um, some of you go plus, some of you go minus. If there were no effect of the class, if I completely failed today at teaching you guys anything, and so your post-test scores were exactly the same as your pre-test scores, just by random chance, some of you might get an extra question right, some of you might miss an extra question, right? Some would have positive gain scores, some would have negative gain scores. When I summed them all up and took the average, the average should be zero, right, if there's no effect. So the population mean, of a different score population is zero by assumption. You guys all see that plugged in over there? It's zero by assumption because it's zero if there's no effect, which is our null hypothesis, right? And so what this tells us is, what's the probability that there was no effect, right? And notice that SD at the bottom, at, but at this point you guys are probably at least familiar enough to, to realize where that's coming from. That's the variance of the, the different scores. So again, in the same way that to compare a sample to a population, we had to create a sampling distribution. Here we have to create a different score sampling distribution. 
right? Because I, I took all of your one scores and your two scores and I turned it into a totally different score, this gain score. That's now our population. And that's what the D subscript reflects. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah. Well, the, the slides, you, you'll have the slides at home. So um, they don't have notes on them. I, I don't like the little notes at the bottom. I always get distracted. Um, but they're posted on your guys' website. And if you have any questions, textbooks will go through this in incredible rigor, like to the point where I think sometimes they're not helpful. Um, and I'm trying to extract all of that extra stuff from there and just give you this is all it is without giving you all the extra sort of bells and whistles on it. Cool. Okay, so that breaks a natural sort of section because now we're going to go to ANOVAs. You guys need a break? You guys cool? You want to keep cruising? Awesome.